You know, he's been better than Sunday, the last church anniversary. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give the Lord Amen. glory because he's good and he's worthy to be praised. The Lord is the strength of my life. Yes, Lord. We thank the Lord for his mercy as we gather this morning. Come on, get out of your feet. Get on your feet. Come on, get off your couch. Come on, do what you need to do. Come on and let's get ready for worship. All over your house, we come to tell the Lord, thank you, huh? because God, you've been better than good. Huh? When I think about how good you've been, hallelujah. Come on, let's get ready for hallelujah. worship. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, come on, right now. Yes, hallelujah. Lord. Uh, everybody, even at your home, come on. Uh, yes, come on, yes, think about yes, it. Yes. Think about how good he's been. Uh, oh, think about the ways that he's made. Think about the doors that he's opened. Think about the things that he's done for you. And then you can sing this with us. I will bless the Lord. I will bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises. And, and his praise shall continually be in my life. No matter. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm green. As long as I'm green. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. I will 
will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see, no matter what I see or how I feel. Long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing. Oh yes, I'm breathing. I bless the Lord. Long as I'm breathing, long as I'm breathing. Oh yes, I'm breathing. I bless the Lord. Oh, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt, let us exalt his name together. Let's lay down, let's lay down our crown and take up his name. Let's do it together, let's do it together. Oh, let's do it together. From the top, I will bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises. And his praise shall continue in my mind. No matter what I see. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I bless the oh, Lord. Magnify, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Let us exalt his name. Together. Together. Let's lay down our crowns. Let's lay down our crowns and, and take up his name. Oh, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Hey, let's, let's do it together. 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 Hey. Oh, you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. 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 You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Come on. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Come on, think about it. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. I should have been dead. I should have been dead. You've been better than good to me. Come on, is that your testimony? Oh, should have lost my mind. Should have lost my mind. Oh, yeah. You've been better than good to me. Hey, I should have been dead. I should have been dead. You've been better than good to me. Should have lost my mind. Should have lost my mind. You've been better than good to me. Oh, yeah. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. 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 I should have been dead. You've been better than good to me. Should have lost my mind. Should have lost my mind. You've been better than good to me. Oh. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. You've been better. You've been better. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. I should have been dead. I should have been dead. You've been better than good to me. Should have lost my mind. Should have lost my mind. Yes, Lord. You've been better than good to me. Oh. Oh, 
on. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. When I think of your goodness, how you bless me over and over. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. Oh, on this last Sunday in 2023, that ought to be somebody's testimony today. Oh, yes, that should be your testimony today because you made it to December 31st, 2023. Oh, hallelujah, you made it to one, two, three, one, two, three. My God. And God bless you, even better than good. You've been better than good to me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. Oh, yes, Lord. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. You kept us all down through the year. You've been better than good to me. Lord, we didn't always deserve your grace and you've your mercy. Been good to me. Many times we were disobedient. What I think God. about you've been better than good to me. Many times we did things that we knew, God, you had not given us permission to do, God. But it was in our flesh. <laughs> and you still kept us, God, through danger seen and unseen. Through the ups and the downs. Through the victories and the defeats. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. So we come on this last day of 2023 to say thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy that kept us. so good and for that we come into this sanctuary today to say thank you God for your goodness and your mercy toward us we thank you this morning for joining us in your various virtual spaces whether you're at your home whether you're in your car whether you're on your job whether you're out of town visiting family you're wrapping up the holiday season, maybe preparing to return to home, to Atlanta. Wherever you may be, we pray God's grace and covering over you. And we are just so glad that on this Sunday morning, on December 31st, oh, all you got to do is think back to January 1st, 2023. And all of us, I believe, somewhere in our heart can recount that there's somebody we knew that didn't make it through. But God, we know that it was in your will, God. And so even in our losses, we give you honor and grace. We thank you, God. And we come today to just celebrate how you've been so good to us. And your mercy. Oh, God. I, I, I can only give my testimony how good you've been. Oh, oh, all my days were not good days. <laughs> but I do believe that my good days outnumbered my bad days. And for that, I won't complain. And Lord, there were some things that I had expected, that I had desirous in 2024, 2023. It didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Some things didn't work out the way I thought they should have worked out. But guess what, God? You said I'm still giving you another chance. And for that, God, I say thank you. For I am believing God for even more yes, Lord. in 2024. Yes, 
Hallelujah. So as we begin to worship him this morning, I ask you in wherever your collective spaces and places are that you would just begin to humble yourself in his presence as we prepare to offer up a prayer to the Lord. holy God we come this morning to just say thank you for your grace and your mercy God we humble ourselves thank before you, you this morning and we say thank you Lord thank you God for walking with us through these 365 days. God, thank you for things seen and unseen. Thank you, God, for the ways you made, the doors you opened, and God, we even thank you for some doors you closed. God, we thank you for the way you made out of no way, for prayers answered, God, and we know you're not finished with us yet. For you've kept us here on this side of Jordan for a reason. Yes, Lord. We may not know what it is, God. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. But teach us, God, to humble ourselves before you. Teach us, God, to seek your face. Teach us, God, to pray and fast so that we may know your will for our lives, God. We thank you for our loved ones and our family members. We, we thank you for all that you've done for us, God. All the promises you kept. All the obstacles we overcame. Even for the trials that we had to go through. For you said trials are but a testing of our faith. And it's through our trials that we learn perseverance and, and we grow stronger, God, in our faith. So we thank you for strengthening us on this journey. We thank you for walking with us. We thank you for abiding with us. We thank you for comforting us. We thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for being with us when all others seem to have deserted us. We thank you, God, for lifting us up in those places where it seems like we've fallen down. We thank you for making ways out of nowhere. God, when it seems our spirit is weak, when it seems that we don't understand how life challenges and changes begin to work in ways that we had not planned or it wasn't what we envisioned, God, understand that you have an even greater vision for our life. And sometimes, God, you have to remove things. You have to remove situations. You have to remove people. You have to close doors so that you can open up a window and pour us out a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive. So God, enable us in 2024 as we stand on the cusp of a new year to say, God, I see new mercies <laughs> every day. New blessings coming my way. God, I know some things didn't work out the way I wanted them to work yeah. out. But God, I'm believing you for even more. I, 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 I know you got more in store for me, God. I know you got more blessings. You got more, more, more things that you have for me to do, God. You have more ways that you're going to make ways. And God, more victories. And so allow us to open up our hearts and receive you this morning. Is your humble servant's prayer. And the people of God said, 
Amen. Amen. And amen. We will now have our scripture reading from the Reverend DeMarcus Prayer. Scripture reading on this morning will come from Isaiah, the 61st chapter, starting at verse 10 and commencing at chapter 62, verse 3, reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And the word of God is recorded on this wise. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with garland and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations for zion's sake i will not keep silent and for jerusalem's sake i will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch the nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory and shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. Verse 3 in chapter 62 says, You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal didum in the hand of your God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. That's a call and response. You, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of you know that you're not alone no matter what goes on in your life, no matter what it's that you experience? Oh, yes. We thank God that we are not alone. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Come on, let's lift up our hands. Jesus, we give you glory, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for being our shelter and you're our comfort. Yes, Lord. And you always hold us close. The Lord is my, Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender. Defender behind me. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Can we say that again? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. 
goes before me. Defender behind, Defender behind me. I won't, I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear. I won't fear. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone.
Hallelujah. How many of us know that he is our comforter? And he is always, always, always. Going strong. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being our comforter and letting us know that we are never, ever alone. Just a couple of things I want to lift up in this worship experience today as we began to look toward 2024. God has put in my spirit that as the body of Christ, that we need to begin to believe God for even more. You know, this thing called faith says faith is the substance of things hopeful. Believe God for even more. You know, this thing called faith says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I believe sometimes we compromise ourselves and we put ourselves in difficult positions because we don't believe that God really is. <laughs> that God really can and that God really will. So in 2024, we, as a body of Christ, we are believing God for even more. So put that in your spirit, begin to lift it up, begin to say it to yourself. Let that be your mantra, whatever it is that God has put in your spirit. Uh, let him know that God is even able to do so much more than what we even think. See, our, our little thoughts don't even compare to what God has in store for us. So we thank God for giving us the ability to believe. So begin to believe. Begin to claim it. Don't be wimpy about it. Oh, well, you know, I, 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 I believe in God. That he going to give me that job. I, I, I'm believing. Say it with power and conviction. I'm believing God for that financial restoration. I'm believing God for that, for that relationship. I'm believing God for that healing. I'm believing God. I am believing that God will do just what he said he would do. And I'm standing on his promises. Hallelujah. Just a couple of things I want to bring before you. We will be back together tonight at 7 p.m. So we ask you to join us. It will not, it will be live as it is taking place, even though we will be sharing from all of our various places. Uh, it will be in person live, but it will be via our various uh, streaming platforms. So we encourage you to join us tonight at 7 p.m. We have an awesome speaker who will be coming forth to share with us on tonight. Night, young man that I met and began to deal with when he was in high school. Wasn't even thinking about preaching. He was just getting on my last nerve. And we used to go to leadership Congress and different meetings and he was always trying to get something, wanted something, always asking for something. And God has just done marvelous things in his life. And I'm very proud of what God has stored into him and how God has called him in the ministry and I believe he will have a word for us tonight at 7 p.m. So come and hear from the Reverend John D. Young as he comes and breaks the bread of life with us tonight at 7 p.m. And then I want to remind you that uh, we haven't done this in a while because, of course, we've been trying to figure out our way out of COVID. But this is something that Reverend and I normally uh, do every year. And I'm asking you all to come and join us with us. Um, the word always talks about prayer and fasting and we you know mm, we get that prayer part but when you start talking about fasting and you got to give up them pork chops and fried chicken and cornbread and collard greens and all that stuff 
Y'all start looking a little weird when pastors start talking. There's a scripture in Daniel. Uh, Daniel, we know Daniel refused to partake of the worldly things that the people who had taken them captive. And so I believe sometimes in our spirit, we have begun to digest too much worldly stuff. And, and we need to step away. So it's 21 days. You'll be finished in time for the Super Bowl. So you can get your chicken wings back for the Super Bowl. But sometimes it begins to change your, your whole dynamic. See, the purpose of fasting isn't always just to run back to what you gave up. But Daniel Fast, I will have the information packets for you on the first Sunday. Uh, it's meditations that go with it. There will be recipes, things that you can do. I even give you a list of restaurants where you can go. It's basically saying you're going to be on a vegan diet. Amen. You can do it, Reverend Prayer. We can do anything for 21 days. And I believe in the midst of them doing it, God will give you a breakthrough. Because, see, we want to rely on our own power. The only reason we can't do it is because we don't think we can do it. But, see, you can't do it, but God can. And so I encourage you to walk with us on this journey. For those who may have dietary restrictions, there will be modifications. But I will tell you, you know, as, as, a, as a people, um, I know you all find this very hard to believe. But as a, as a creature, we are not meat eaters. We were created to be on a plant diet. Uh, so you'll be surprised what some of the ailments that you're having, that God will come and, and correct them. Uh, now, it's not about weight loss. I will just tell you, I've done Daniel fast many times, and I really have never lost any weight. Not the physical weight, but my body has felt better. I've lost some mental weight. I've lost some, some, some medical weight, things that were uh, dealing with me, and, and God relieved me of them until the point where I, I do not profess to be a vegan, but many days I am on a vegetarian diet, and I have learned to watch what I eat because it does make a difference what goes in and how it affects your body. So. Be on the lookout for that information on first Sunday, and we will kick it off on January the 11th, and that will put us ending on the last day of January. So we praise God for those who will make this journey with us. Amen. And as I've already said, our watch night service will be tonight at 7 p.m. We invite you to come and join us at 7 p.m. All of the links will be posted. You will get all the notifications so that you can join us for that experience. We're looking forward to a mighty move of God on this last day in 2023. I also want to remind you uh, that our food ministry uh, is currently closed for the holiday. They will be back on the first Saturday in uh, January. So please share that news with those who uh, may be looking for that. And we just thank God for what God is doing. And it does not yet appear what he shall do. Because what? We are believing God for more. For even more. More finances. More, 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 more peace. More joy. I don't know what your more is. But you know what it is. Claim it. Believe it. And watch God do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to thank this praise team for setting the atmosphere. And we're getting ready for the preach word. Hallelujah. And so as they prepare to come and set the atmosphere, I pray that you will set the atmosphere in your space, wherever you may be. Hallelujah.
eyes haven't seen And ears haven't heard The kind of blessings The kind of blessings That's about to fall on me Cause victory is here Kick your feet out the door God's doing a new thing Get ready for overflow Eyes haven't seen And ears haven't heard The kind of blessings The kind of blessings that's about to fall on me. Cause victory is here. Kick your feet out the door. God's doing a new thing. Get ready for
his spirit lives within us. And because of that, we are able to walk, move, and have our being. I greet you once again on this last Sunday in the month of December and the last Sunday in the month, in the year of 2023. Oh, God has been good. Somebody ought to give God a praise right now. Wherever you are, you ought to be praising him because you made it. Mm. Oh, yes, you made it against the odds when it seems like things were stacked against us. Oh, there were days when we didn't know if tomorrow was going to come. We doubted whether we would make it through. We had some bad news and we thought it was the end. We had some disappointments and we thought we maybe couldn't go on. Uh, things didn't turn out the way we wanted, but God has brought us through. And for that, I praise him. I give him. Yes. And so we're going to walk in his way. We're going to let his spirit live within us. As we proceed to conclude this year and move into 2024 in a, in a few hours, <clears throat> uh, I want to begin to set the atmosphere for our journey for our crossover. And for that, I want to uh, draw your attention to the same book that was read earlier, but from a different chapter. Isaiah was a powerful prophet. And I want to draw your attention to the 63rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. And I want to lift up a couple of verses of that chapter. And it is about remembering the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. And what better time on this December 31st date than to have a time of remembrance. So read with me as I go to Isaiah 63 verses 7 through 9. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version, it reads thusly, I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all the Lord has done for us, and the great favor to the house of Israel that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior. In all their distress, it was no messenger or angel but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord and the praiseworthy acts of the Lord. Lord, help us now on this last day of 2023 to recount your gracious deeds, to give praise for your praiseworthy acts toward us, for your mercies, for your favor, for your abundance, for your steadfast love, for all that you have shown to us as your people. God, teach us to believe that what you did in 2023, you will continue to do in 2024. Let us not doubt your power. Let us not doubt your favor. Let us not doubt your abundance. Let us not doubt your abilities. God, help us to walk 
by faith and not by sight. For we know in 2024, we're going to see some things that may not seem like we can overcome them. We're going to see some battles that it looks like we may not be able to win. We're going to get some news that we seem like we won't be able to recover from. But God, give us the faith to believe that what you did for us in 2023 that there is even more in store for us in 2024. And now, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God together said, amen. And for just a short time this morning, I want to talk to you from this text of Isaiah that it's time to believe. It's time to believe as the sands are descending through the hourglass. As this year is coming to a close, if you have not believed, it's time for you to believe right now. Before 2023 ends, I want you to truly understand what it means to believe in the word of God. In this text today, we find the prophet Isaiah speaking to a disillusioned people, people who had endured some terrible disappointments, some people who had seen their hopes dashed by the invasion of a hostile governmental ruler. They were uncertain of what was gonna happen in the next few hours, in the few next days, weeks, months, or even years. They were finding it even more difficult to think about what had been for the overwhelming doom and fear and unknown of what was to come. So Isaiah stood before them and spoke these words as a reminder of the power of their God, who had already done great things and would again make things all right. Isaiah speaks to a people that while they may have been free from physical enslavement and exile, they were a people that were still in despair because they were still entrapped by their living conditions, their social restrictions, and the overwhelming odds that they continue to face each day. Isaiah reminded them that God was their father, and as such, he was concerned about their situation. He was concerned about their enslavement to violence and greed and oppressive political systems and leaders and racism. That same God, he reminded them, was not and could not be restricted to human understanding or definition. That's where belief comes in because we have to be able to step beyond our human (laughs) understanding and definition. We have to be able to understand, as Isaiah reminded them, that even though it might look difficult, even though it might not seem to be working in your favor, that this same God, the one that was and the one that is and the one that is to come, that the God of our past is also the God of our present and the God of our future. Isaiah was reminding them that it was time to believe in God again for even more. And so he began to tell them how to go about this. And he started out by telling them they needed to recount the deeds of the Lord. And remember the praiseworthy acts of the Lord. As 2023 begins to draw to a close today, I believe I can get some witnesses to testify that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you would not still be here today. I believe there's someone somewhere sitting at their computer or looking at their phone or or, or on their YouTube TV that can testify while 2023 may not have been your best year, it was because of the grace of God that you made it through. I, I, I know some of us suffered some, some losses. Some of us had some setbacks. Some of us even had some disappointments and shed some tears. But guess what? It's 2023, 12, 20, 31, 2023, and God kept you. 
God provided a way out of whatever it was. And even in the midst of that, when it seemed that there was no way out, even in the midst of your darkest day, in the midst of when it seemed that it was not going to ever happen, the sun never refused to shine. Even in your midnight hours, the morning light still arrived to drive out the darkness. And so verse 7 calls us to remember what God has done for us. And so it is time for you to know you are not in this alone. That my God, your God, our God is able. His steadfast love is never ending. His mercy endured through 2023. And I got some news for you today that that same mercy, that same grace, uh, that same thing that kept you to this day is available to you in 2024. When we take time to recount the blessings, when we take time to remember God's power, when we take time to recount how many times you were down for the count in 2023, but you never struck out on life. When we remember God's favor and God's mercy and the love that God has shown toward us and toward you. Then as the praise team was singing, his, his mercy toward us, his grace toward us. Then we know that even as 2023 closes out and 2024 is knocking at the door, we can declare with power uh, that I'm still believing God for even more. I know what he did for me this year, and I believe that he's going to do even more for me in 2024. It's time out for us doubting God. It's time out for us doubting what God can do <laughs> because we put him up against our feeble abilities. And it's time out for us saying, I don't know if I can make it <laughs> because, see, God can make it for you. It's time to believe. There's no other help I know. There's no other advice I can give you. There is no other wish I can have for you on this final day of 2023 than for you to have a true relationship with God so that you can never doubt and only believe. The very foundation for everything and anything that you desire in life is built on that relationship. Uh, that relationship uh, causes you to be willing to commit that with the all-sufficient, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-protecting, all-providing God, that whatever somebody said was impossible just became possible. It lets you know that the Alpha and the Omega, the one that can start those things you desire, can also bring them to completion because you know that there is no other like the Lord. See, God desires to be our ever-present help. He desires to be our way maker. He desires to be our provider. He desires to be our protector. But we have to believe. Today is the time for you to begin to truly believe. Today is a time to be sure and very sure that there can be no doubt about your relationship in 2024. See, verse eight then reminds us of God's desire for us. It says, surely they are my people. And because of that, he became their savior. It's time to believe that God is who he says he is and can do what he said he can do. In 2024, it is time for a savior. It's time for us to put our trust and our cares and our concerns in the hands of someone who can save us, someone who can deliver us, someone who can cover us, uh, someone who can provide for us, someone who cares for us, someone who will count us in when society counts us out, someone who will protect us from the desires of those who will seek to 
steal the future of our youth and young adults who will seek to kill the dreams of our elders for a brighter future for their children and grandchildren. Those who will seek to destroy the hope and work of a generation that marched and protested and died that we might be counted as equal, not less than or other than. We have to believe that that God is capable of lifting up the heads of our young black males and females and let them know they are worthy of honor, worthy of success, worthy of a future, worthy to prosper and live and not die young. But we have to believe. We have to, it's time for us to believe. It's time for us to walk by faith. It's time for us to stand on the faith so that they, we can be an example to those who are looking to us in desperation, looking for hope, that we can show them what we have trusted in, what we have believed in, what has brought us thus far. It's time for us to enter into a relationship with God, a one that is built on mutual belief and trust, not doubting, not wondering, not saying maybe, might, I don't know, but we are confident that God will do just what God said he would do. And we demonstrate that by showing that God is with us because he said, as we just finished celebrating, I am Emmanuel. God is with us. God is our savior. Jesus the Christ, the one we just finished celebrating, has not left us, but is here extending grace, extending mercy, extending love. But he wants to know, will you commit to a relationship with him? Will you believe and trust him and never doubt him? Will you allow this God to come before your other gods? Will you allow the Savior to extend grace and mercy because he's able, because you believe he can do it, because you trust him? And if we believe in this God, it is also time for us to show it in our relationships with each other that our relationships with each other are based on mutual common good and not envy, competition, and destruction. It's time for us to believe that God has so much more for us. And then I want to close out by asking you to remember, as verse 9 reminds us that in our distress, that in our times of trouble, that in our times of challenge, our trust and our hope should be built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That means we believe what we sing about. We believe what we pray about. We believe what we shout about. We believe what we read in the scriptures about. Because it tells us it wasn't a messenger. It wasn't a preacher. It wasn't a prophet. It wasn't a prophetess or an angel, but it was the presence of God that saves us. See, we look to things seen and refuse to believe in the things unseen. See, God's presence can only be felt, and you can only experience that through your belief. And see, you got to shift your focus off the physical, off your circumstance, off your situation, off the distractions and distractors in order to be able to praise God in spite of everything we see in spite of everything we've endured, in spite of everything we suffered, in spite of everything we experienced, because we believe that God is working and we can feel God's spirit and be able to trust him, even though the challenges may be difficult, even though the news may be bad, even though the forecast may be dismal and disappointing and discouraging. 
because we have an assurance that enable us to still praise God, to still trust God through it all, an assurance and a belief that enables us to endure, enables us to keep moving forward. It makes us to continue to press through to something new because we remember, because we believe, because we can recall to remembrance those things that God has done for us, those praiseworthy acts, those times he saved us before and when we call them to our remembrance then our belief is strengthened and we know that that same God that never left us through 365 days of 2023 8,760 hours that same God brought us through 525,600 minutes of 2023 and that knowledge that that same God that same presence, that same power is here right now and will be here on tomorrow. Because of our remembrance, because of our belief, we know that 2024 will not be our prison. It will not be our defeat, but it will be our victory. It will not be our destruction, but it will be our destiny. Because we remember all the times God kept us, all the times God delivered us, all the time God protected us, all the time God provided for us, all the time God lifted us up. And so when you begin to recall, as the prophet said in the scripture, he told us, he said, I recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all the Lord has done for us. So I began to go back. I had to go back and think through 2023. And then I went on back and start thinking about some stuff that happened in 2022. And then I said, my God was still showing up and showing out in 2021. Oh, he still had me in 2020. And I believe he did a breakthrough in 2019. Bought us out of a pandemic. Kept us sheltered in place. And then in 2018, somebody's body was healed. Oh, in 2017, somebody got delivered. All you got to do is begin to take a walk down memory lane. And understand that when you call on the praiseworthy acts of the Lord and remember the goodness that he's done, you should have no doubt that it's time to believe. Oh, you know that the way things are are not the way they've always been, and nor will they be that way always. It's time to believe that the same God that saved you from your distress, it's time to remember that the same God that lifted us up out of situations that were meant to overcome us and we overcame them, that same God that is able to do what no president can do, that same God that is able to do what no Congress could do, because that same God said he had the government upon his shoulder, and he sent us the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. He can be trusted, and because I can trust him, I have no doubt. My belief is firm, and I can depend on him. 2024 to do even more in my life. I don't know about you, but I'm going to challenge you in 2024 that you will believe God for even more, more for your deliverance, more for your destiny, more for your healing, more for your finances, more for your recovery, more for your children, more for your grandchildren, more for those things that God has distilled in you. Will you believe that he will bring them to pass? Will you believe that God has even more in store? Maybe it was a good year for you in 2023, but guess what? I got news for you. God is still able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can even imagine. So stay tuned 
Don't change the channel. <laughs> Stay tuned <laughs> because God <laughs> has more in store for you. <laughs> it's time to begin to believe <laughs> that God can do it <laughs> like nobody else can. <laughs> when we can't see the way, <laughs> when we don't know how it's going to happen, we don't know when it's going to happen. But one thing for sure, we're going to stand on the promise that God said it. And so it shall be so. It's time to believe. If you never believed before, it's time to believe. I would not walk out of 2023 doubting that God said, I know the plans I have for you, plans for you to prosper and have a good life. Will you believe it? Will you trust God? Will you go into 2024 walking not by faith, not by sight, but by faith? Stop getting caught up in what you can see. Hmm. Stop getting caught up in what you hear. Stop getting caught up in what somebody else speaks over your life. The word has been spoken for you. I created you. I knew you in your mother's womb before you knew anything about anything. And I had a plan for you. That's what God says. So I challenge you in 2024 to begin to believe God for even more. If you have been doubting, I challenge you to connect with us wherever you may be. Our QR code is appearing on the screen and our contact number at 404-548-8169. And we'll be so glad to help you understand how you can connect with God for even more in 2024. I don't want you to walk through this coming year feeling disillusioned, disappointed, discouraged, depressed, doubting, unsure, but walking boldly in confidence because you believe. You don't doubt. You don't waver. Your faith is solid. That's my desire for you and you and you and you in 2024, that you would believe. It's time. And the reason I said time is because so much of what we deal with is because of our unbelief. Healing. Finances. Relationships. We don't believe. Look at all the times in the Bible when Jesus did his miracles and people were healed and people were restored and people were uh, bought back and people uh, received. Jesus said, your faith has healed. Your faith has restored. Your faith is your belief. And when things didn't go, he reminded them, he said, oh, ye of little faith. If only you would believe. So in 2024, if only, if only, don't, if you don't do anything else, believe. Believe God. Get in his word. See what his word says. And then trust it and believe it and do not doubt it. That's my prayer for you. Be blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And 
we pray that you have been blessed on this day and that the word that has went forth has sunk it down in your soul and really blessed you on this last day of 2023. And as we prepare to sow our last seed of this year, we ask that you just reflect on what God has really done for you. And see, your blessing and your seed is not for anyone other than you. It is your honor of God and the manifestation that he has had in your life. And so on this last day of 2023, I challenge you to sow a seed that matches what God has sown into you. And so our giving options are appearing on the screen, our Cash App, our Gillify, our Zelle. Of course, if you are in the, in the space and out of the area, or if you just want to mail, the mailing address is there. Uh, the zip code is 30296. But we pray that God's blessings has been overflowing in your life this year. And that as a result, your blessings will overflow back to him. For God indeed does love a cheerful giver because then we are being glad about what God has done for us. And I praise him. If you're in the space and you need to reach out, we encourage you to reach out to us at our text alert number 404-548-8169. We will be so glad to connect with you and share with you the good news of Jesus Christ. We thank you as always for worshiping with us. We thank you for this day of 2023, this last day that you thought it not robbery to join us in this virtual worship experience. And we hope that your new year will not just be a happy one, but it will be a blessed one. Because you are blessed. We've been singing that song over and over again. And I don't know if you really have gotten it in your spirit. But we're going to close. I don't know. Maybe we'll come up with a new closing song for 2024. But right now, we're going to close out this last worship experience of, of our 11 a.m. service. Don't forget, we'll be back at 7 p.m. tonight. But today, we're going to go out the same way we came in at uh, in January of 2023, reminding you of just how blessed you truly, truly are. You made it. <laughs> Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. bless. For the devil, For the devil is, is defeated. We are blessed. We sing late, late, late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work, it's gonna work in your favor. I believe it. Now. We sing late, late, late in the midnight hour. God. God's gonna turn it around. Hand around, hand around, hand around, hand around, hand around. Hand around. Hand around. Hand around. We sing late, late in the midnight hour. God. Turn it around. It's gone. It's gonna work in your favor. We sing late. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. And 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 around. Say God's gonna turn. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. And around, and around, and around, and around, and around, and around, and around. 
say God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. God's gonna turn it around. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're 